Good afternoon and welcome to the Stick Diner Empire podcast. I'm Luke McLaughlin here with Lucas Ortiz and Mike Arango. And we have a very special guest today, uh, Mr. Damon Bruce, longtime uh, broadcaster in the Bay Area and now turned podcaster. How you doing, Damon? Excellent. Thank you guys for having me. It's good to see you once again. We get to talk about the Niners like a couple times a year. I'm happy to join you. So let's hop into it. What an interesting year so far. Crazy. I'm going to go back to the days of sports phone 680. What year was that? That was a long <laughs> time ago, man. We're going back to like 2005, six, seven, eight. You know, those, those are, those are good times, early times in my broadcasting career. Cool. Um, I'm going to start it off here and just say, uh, Brock Purdy, did you, no one expected what's happening with Brock, but the, the concern I have is that the depth on the team with the quarterback, you know, if something happens to him, aren't we pretty much screwed? I mean, do you wish that Trey was still there if you're a Niner? No, fan? no, I don't want, I don't want to talk about backup quarterbacks anymore. <laughs> I'm tired of talking about backup quarterbacks. Uh, you know, Sam Darnold's here to fill the bill. God forbid something happened to Brock, but just like any other team in football, your starting quarterback goes down. It's all she wrote kids kiss the whole year off. I mean, that's just the way it is. So the football's a war of attrition right now. They're winning a war uh, like any army, when your general gets blown up, your army's probably not going to win that war. I mean, it's just, it's, I, I, I don't worry about backup quarterbacks. I never want to discuss another backup quarterback. <laughs> I had Trey Lance so jammed down my throat by a group of media members who didn't even know what the hell they were looking at in the first place. So, you know, Brock Purdy is the single greatest lottery ticket that has ever fallen into the lap of the 49ers. So let's just scratch it off and enjoy it. Nice. So a lot of people don't know that I actually, the reason why we have this podcast is basically because of Damon. I called him one day and said, how do I become a broadcaster? And he just said, dude, it's everything you need is in your pocket. Just start a podcast. That's it. <laughs> it's it. so you, funny it, because now you have one too. Don't wait around for, for perfect. Perfect's never coming. When you got something pretty good, you just roll with it. And, and yeah, the only way to be a broadcaster, I guess, is to broadcast, which maybe is part of the reason why there's so many uneducated fans or fans getting their information from the wrong place because any swinging dick with an internet connection can pretend they're a broadcaster these days. <laughs> there's no more vetting. There's no more gatekeeping. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's it's the world that we live in. And we have an ability to communicate like never before in the recorded course of human history. So, if you want to join the conversation, all you need to do is click go live and, and you can, you can be at the center of any conversation these days. So yeah, Absolutely. I mean, there's no, no reason to be shy. No wallflowers need not apply. <laughs> so I, I got something for Damon since, you know, we are a 49er podcast, but we do have a special guest today. So I kind of want to follow up with what you just said about the podcasting. How do you like the freedom of being somebody that was on air? You know, you didn't have full editorial control of your show. You had to water, you had to make sure you didn't use any curse words. You had to be very careful about sponsors and things like that. Now you have that freedom with your own show. Are you enjoying it? Do you, do you feel like it's kind of opened up your, your capabilities a little bit more? I do. I, I think that this is, this is the medium for me. It's the best I've ever been. I keep on getting that feedback from a lot of people who, mm -hmm. You know, like Luke had been listening to me since the early 2000s on, on the radio, and um, it, it's an awful lot of fun. It's uh, imagine if the class clown could never get detention. And that's the way I look at it. You, you know, are having a lot of fun. I saw one where you're like scrambling an egg and teaching people how the proper way to scramble eggs, but you're also talking about sports. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, you can't do that on the radio. Oh, you really can't. And, and, you know, I just look at how, the entire world has changed its its viewing habits. Nobody watches just normal TV anymore. It just doesn't happen. People want to be able to enjoy what they want to enjoy, start it when it's convenient for them, stop it when it's convenient for them. And anyone who wants to take my show in the car with them on normal commuting hours, they can download the podcast. They can still do that. They can take it home with them. They can watch it at home on their TV. It's media the way that people insist on consuming media these days. And so... Um, you know, my, my getting laid off from radio, I call it my reluctant push forward because I was comfortable enough there. I probably wouldn't have made this pivot, but five years from now, 
everybody in sports talk radio is going to be laid off and everybody's going to be looking to come to YouTube. And I got the opportunity to, you know, kind of get there earlier and it'll be a blessing one day. I really think so. And it is fun to, you know, not that anyone ever, you know, really had any governor on me in terms of what I did or didn't talk about the freedom of not worrying about business partnerships or flagship station partnerships. It's, it's, um, I, I, I think it makes my content more dangerous and, and more valuable for the actual listener because we don't need to self edit anymore. We can let it rip and whoever I offend, it doesn't matter because, uh, I, you know, my wife and I are, are basically a team here and we both decided that neither of us is going to be suspending either of us. So we're, <laughs> we're, good. we're good. But, uh, you know, my, when, when your HR department and your CEO is your <laughs> wife. Everything's okay. <laughs> so when the, the 49ers had their three-game skid, the sky was falling, nothing was working, fire the coach. What the hell no. is well, John Lynch okay. doing? No firing the you coach. Weren't, you weren't, you weren't, <laughs> nobody was saying, hey, like, you know, be careful what you say. Don't piss off the the top brass of the 49ers. Like like they might do on, on another you know, flagship radio station. You know, I mean, may, I, I don't think so. I, you know, this is, this is a, this is a big market. This is big boy stuff. I, I you know, mm -hmm. I don't think that, that teams are sitting around with a red bat phone that goes right to a program director's office saying, you know, get them off the air. Don't let them talk about that. Like right. that was never my experience, even at, at either radio station here in San Francisco. And I worked for them both. Um, I, I was always pretty much left alone, but it's just the, just how I personally feel about it. Like I, you know, I, I don't need to worry. First of all, that call never really came. And now I have to worry about it coming even less, you know I mean? So <laughs> it, it's just, it's freedom. It's freedom of language. Yeah. Um, not that I want to do some overly profane show or anything like that, but I think a poor, a, a properly timed swear word here and there is number one, how we all talk in our everyday lives. And number two, can accentuate the moment in in a very either funny or illuminating kind of way. So it's just, look at it this way. My, I got I got a group of friends who are like my personal, actual, in my life friends. And in that group, I'd say about half of them like actually bothered to listen to my show <laughs> and they tell me now more than ever, they're like, you on YouTube is you coming over for dinner. It's you being on the bar stool next to me, mm -hmm. as opposed to you being in the studio and broadcaster, Damon, a formal broadcast where you got to reintroduce yourself and reset the segment and tease ahead to get people through a commercial break and all the, the radio mechanics, which... Very few radio people have anymore because people who knew what to do are, you know, now priced out of the industry and not on the radio anymore. So it's, it feels like amateur hour over there. Um, and it, it, it's been an interesting journey to say the least, but I'm having a ton of fun over here and, you know, I get to do whatever I want. So who, who, who isn't looking for that in their work day? I get to do whatever I want. It, it works for you. And in a ways you're letting us into your home. I mean, you're literally letting us into your home. You are your home right you're now. on stage. You're hey, thank, yeah. thank, thanks for letting me on your exclusive private beach. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> you know, but it's uh, more exciting than a white wall. You know, I don't have any uh, nice I, art behind me. I lived I don't in have New the York Bay years. Bridge, and I don't have a studio like Mike over there. So I lived in New York years back, and I've yet to find that that beautiful crystal clean water in new york i mean when i went there it did not it's look not good queens. i will tell you that <laughs> not i'm queens. from queens so it's I guess not that howard beach it. it's a nice beach but it's not howard beach it's not rockaway <laughs> beach it's no not, it's a, not rockaway good knowledge there we go good knowledge again originally from new york so i yeah. i know these things you know <laughs> Gentlemen, hey. speaking of that three game, three three game skid, the Niners are back on track now. I'm happy to say, as a fan myself, two two wins in a row. Has anyone taken notice out of what's our record now? Seven and three. Mm -hmm. Is your record right off the top of my head, seven and three. Seven and yeah. three. Six of those seven wins are blowouts. If you look at it, so when they're rolling, they're rolling really, really well. They're winning every just about every game by double digits. Now they got a hard streak right here. They got a really, you know, they got four games coming up four or five games now against most of the birdie teams, so to speak, 
We got Seattle twice. We got the Ravens, which is a game that does worry me a little because Lamar is a, a special type of athlete. He's very, very hard to defend, so to speak. You know, we have Philly. Philly's a game that worries me as well. But let's start with Seattle. How do you see us faring tomorrow in Seattle? I think On this is a game rest. that we should win. Yeah. I do think this is a game we should win. And and if we do win, let me tell you, I would love to see Richard Sherman grab a piece of turkey and eat it in the middle of the field. I don't know what happened since he's left Seattle, but he doesn't seem to have a good relationship with that organization. He mentioned something about that earlier in the week. Do you know anything about that by any chance, Damon? No, no, I, I, I don't know about anything about Richard's relationship with the Seahawks. I never covered the Seahawks or th those interpersonal relationships. I just know how he 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 really glommed on to the 49ers when he was yeah. here. He loved his experience with the Niners. I don't know if that colors the way he feels about it. I think he's still angry. Um Think so with, too. you know S Seattle for a lot of reasons but who who knows what they are um this is an important game i mean this is a division game so you know i know that the philadelphia eagles are without a doubt the prettiest girl at the high school dance so you definitely <laughs> want to take her out but until then this is a a monster game and i would feel a whole lot better for the 49ers chance, I, I like the 49ers chances to win. I think that they win this game, but I would love their chances to win. If it were happening under normal circumstances, normal prep week, normal, just, un, you know, unabbreviated uh, Thursday night, just a normal rolling into Seattle with the normal prep time. I'd love it. Uh, this is, we all know that familiarity breeds contempt. We all know that the Seahawks and 49ers either play up to or down to the other team's level sometimes the Seahawks are sort of a middling shooting themselves in their own foot most penalized team in the NFL this year the 49ers are this monster that like you said they got they got a point differential which I I looked this up this is really interesting yeah. so the Eagles are nine and one their point differential is plus 61 the Lions right. eight and two with a point differential of plus 43 the 49ers have the worst record of the three at seven and three but their point differential is plus 122 yeah. wow. so when We've they hit scored you with, mm -hmm. yeah when they hit you with brass knuckles they <laughs> really hit you so um if the Niners don't turn the ball over. They don't fall for an okey doke. Seattle doesn't steal a possession with a fake field goal, fake punt, or too many turnovers. The Niners should carry the day. But again, night game, short week, Pete Carroll, Seattle, weird things do happen up there. Agreed. Agreed. What I was going to mention is the Niners have actually scored more points than Philly this year, and they've given up a good amount of points less. So I do think we match up well. What really worries me about the matchup with them coming up in a few weeks is really our O-line. And maybe Ortiz could chime on this a little bit. Whether or not our O-line could withstand that pressure from their D-line. Because, yeah, they lost Hargrave last year, but they already replaced him with a fantastic rookie who, who almost made a fantastic play the other day, by the way, when he slid between the guy's legs. But... I really feel for the Niners to beat the Eagles. If there's one thing they just have to do more than anything, they got to block for Purdy or else they won't stand a chance. How do you feel? No team is any better than their offensive line play for the most part across the board. I mean, everything that happens in a football game is usually happening on the line of scrimmage. And that's, that's one place where Philadelphia will have a decided advantage. As Brock Purdy is putting up these remarkable numbers as Christian McCaffrey's leading the NFL in rushing, it's happening behind a line that is getting pro football focus graded, you know, in the early 20s. They're mm -hmm. they're good. They're serviceable. They're not great. They're not overwhelming. Um, and it, you know, it's it is a concern. You know, good defensive line play has gotten in the 49ers in some of these. The, these games, you know, the Bengals played pretty well up front. Obviously, Cleveland played very well up front and the Eagles are are a straight up bully. I mean, they are they're They're a bully. And maybe because of that, it's just in their DNA that that team knows how to win ugly. I mean, it's it's one thing yeah. to have this impressive, robust plus one twenty two point differential. It's another to have half of that and still a better record. That means you know how to win ugly and you know how to get grimy. And that's where football usually goes in the postseason. And that's why, look, I'm not assuming anything against Philadelphia. As a matter of fact, I'll tell you exactly what should happen. That is a home game for the Eagles. The Eagles have the better record. They should beat the 49ers. 
The Niners are going to have to prove that they can win that game before I assume a single thing going into it. There are matchups that I like. There are, there are tendencies that could favor them. They will have a few extra days of prep, which for Kyle yeah. could make a difference in that game. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not, there are no grandiose predictions of success in Philadelphia until I see it with my own two eyes. The Eagles have earned that. I mean, the Eagles have earned that respect. They just went into Arrowhead and got it done. Now, the fact that their best defender all night long for Philadelphia was the frying pan hands attached to chief <laughs> wide receivers. <laughs> nice. Like that was their best player. It really was. Yeah. Um, but the, they're, the, the Eagles are legit. I mean, there's just no way there. You can't argue with nine and one best record in football. You can't argue with that. They win every close game this year so far, with the exception of one. They've won a lot of close games. I'd agree. Lucas, you got some thoughts stirring over there. You got some questions for David? Yeah. So to your point about the offensive line, do we stand pat and just hope that guys get healthy? Aaron Banks is, is out right now with a turf toe. John Feliciano, he's been okay, but I mean, I saw the guy got, he was pancaked by Vita Vey. And if Brock Purdy didn't get the ball out on a perfectly timed pass, I mean, Every, he would have been sacked. He would have been, yeah. Everybody, everybody gets pancaked pancake. by Vita Vea. You know, that's, 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 that's not bad. I look, the Niners did make a move. They added Ben Bartich this week. They, uh, they signed him off of, of uh, yeah. free agency. I mean, that's where you're going. I mean, there is no move to make the tread deadline has passed. Obviously. I think they tried to maybe add an, an offensive lineman. Uh, what Ezra Cleveland ended up going, to, to Miami, I believe instead Jacksonville. Were, he was on, he was on Jacksonville's thank you, thank roster. You, thank you, Jacksonville. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know that uh, they were knocking on his door up in Minnesota before the trade deadline happened, but yeah, Aaron Banks getting healthy. Spencer Burford being healthy is the path <laughs> through and out of this for the Niners offensive line. There's, there's their, their problems need to be solved for the most part in house. There is no, there's no one coming in to save the Niners. And I don't think that, you know, Ben Bartich is going to be, you know, all of a sudden, one of the best guards in football should they turn to him. So um, that's just depth, and and hopefully that you know their their, their starters get healthy. And team team health is the most important thing. That's it. You know, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Probably the healthiest team. The secondary is a little suspect now that Hufanga went down. Um, we're going to be starting a rookie. Um, what do you think about that situation? And. Does Chase Young kind of help that situation because now they're getting to the quarterback faster? Without a doubt. You want to get a better you know, better brand to play in your secondary, put more pressure on a quarterback. I also really like Jair Brown. I loved him at Penn State. I thought he was a first, second round pick quality type of, you know, mm -hmm. rookie. I, I'm, I'm surprised that he lasted to the Niners in the third round. And uh, look, I drove the Talanoa Hufanga bandwagon. He was not having a particularly great year after a great start to his career. There is an argument that Jair Brown is faster and stronger than Talanoa Hufanga. So let's see this guy. I mean, he got burned on his first play that he was out there basically against Tampa. And then the next thing you know, is he's ending the game with an interception in the end zone. And before that, and an even more crucial moment, he was on fourth down defending Mike Evans and he did it in the end zone without a penalty. Like I, I, I like Jair Brown an awful mm -hmm. lot. I like Hufanga an awful lot. It sucks that his season is over with the ACL, but I think it's a lateral move. Like I don't think the 49ers are going to be undone by this blind spot of competence now playing in their secondary. I like Jair Brown and you know what? Welcome to the show, kid. He gets thrown right into the fire. So uh, it, it's, this is the way football works. Next man up. I Multiple think they'll use him the defended. same way too. Hufanga, he wasn't always an inside the box guy. There were times where Gibson would be the blitzer and Hufanga would actually be the deep safety. And I think Jair Brown's got that, that versatility as well. I think, you can use Isaiah Oliver as a as a strong safety and maybe put him in a in a situation where you want a an extra tackler. You know they're going to run, but you want maybe a bigger body as a as a safety. So we have options. I think we have really good depth at that position, even with Hufunga coming down. And we got guys like Womack who are coming off the injury list, and I think Darrell Luter just got activated off the pup list as well. So guys are coming back. Guys are getting healthy. It sucks having Huff down, but. 
like you said earlier, Dave, uh, next man up. Like we can't we can't slow down this train at all. We got to keep it going all the way to the Super Bowl. Yeah, I mean, I look, I who who knows where it ends up, but where they are right now is pretty darn healthy, all things considered. Just look around the league. We already got it feels like half the league is to their backup quarterback already. Um, half the league has had a a really devastating exit injury. You know, Mark Andrews, I think, changes the fortunes of of the uh uh of the Ravens, Ravens. Yeah. you know, greatly with with him being done for the year. Um, but that is going to be just a, a monster, a monster Christmas Eve game for the 49ers. They got they look, everything we need to know about this team is pretty much going to reveal itself in the next three weeks of football, right? I mean, you got Seattle, Eagles, Seattle, and then Ravens. It 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 doesn't get much tougher than that. Are the, are the Cardinals in there before they get to the Ravens? I think maybe, but it 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 doesn't get much tougher the rest of the way through than it is than it's going to be. So this is here it is. The, the the part of the season that you hope to get to with a decent record, the Niners got it. You know, 7 and 3 might not be good enough for some people. I uh, you know, it's it's pretty good. It's it's pretty damn good. You know, and they, they 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 let go of the rope obviously really ag- against the Bengals. Um they're they're not happy with that loss in Minnesota. The Loss in Cleveland was a Jake Moody kick away from being, uh, you know, an eight and two season. So it was never as bad as those claimed it to be. And it's, it's pretty damn good. I mean, the Niners are positioned really, really well. I think that if you could have walked up to Kyle before the year started and says, so you're seven and three going into Seattle on Thanksgiving, do you buy it or do you hope for more? He would have bought it right there. He would have bought that. Yeah. And what do we know about Kyle's teams, even, even in his first year where, you know, we weren't, we weren't that good of a team. He plays really, his teams play well in November, December. He closes out the second half of seasons almost better than any other head football coach going right now. They play well the last, they play well to close it out. They may not start fast, but November, December are good months for the 49ers. So everyone was complaining about the, you know, the, the, the start, the five and three start going into the bye week before Jacksonville. Look, it's never good to have a three game losing streak. I'll, I'll, I'll you know, I'm going to go way out on a limb and just put that out there. <laughs> you don't want three game losing streaks, but the five and three first half record is the second best first half record in any Kyle Shanahan season, but for 2019 when they were, you know, that they were on their way to a Super Bowl. So as everyone was complaining and talking about how this isn't working, it was actually working better than any other first half Kyle's coached, but for one that ended up in the Super Bowl. So um, there are a lot of people who are just slaves to the moment and prisoners of the moment, and they don't really understand history or how hard this all is in the first place. So again, even as the Niners were going bad, they were still going in a pretty good direction this whole way through. So I like their chances as much as anybody. If they get to the postseason healthy, they got a puncher's chance to win it all. And you can't ask for more than that. Like that. Well said. <laughs> Thank you so much Luke. for being on the show, Damon. Um, let me wish all three of you guys and every single person watching in your audience or listening to your podcast a very happy Thanksgiving. I hope you're surrounded with fan, uh, friends and family and loved ones. And, and that's what this is all about. So happiest of Thanksgiving. If you'd like to make my Thanksgiving a little bit better, please subscribe to Damon Bruce Plus on YouTube. Yes, Download the podcast. To Damon Bruce. Thank you very, very much, <laughs> guys. Thank you for having me. And Thank I'll you. tell you what, let's do this again in the postseason. How about that? Sounds good. Let's do it. Let's do it. We'll do yeah, another so little uh, collaboration. You you take the reins, and you know we'll just <laughs> name the you name the day. Oh no! So here's the thing. I like I like you guys taking the reins. I can just follow along. You just for follow. Right. Yeah. Boss, looks so a good. Yeah, looks a good here. host. I'll come along. Thanks, yeah. guys. Thank Have a great you. Thanksgiving. Appreciate it. Thank Have you, sir. Have a great day. Appreciate it. All right. Thank you, fellas.